you are very prompt in prompting me. I appreciate that. Why don't you come and attend my next batch too? Okay. <laughs> I'm looking for somebody like you, you know. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. I forgot that. All right. The recording has been started. Okay. So my first question is why or what is a back, backup and what is a restore process in any RDBMS? Backing up means you are basically saving a copy of it, and then restore is if something goes wrong, you're uh, making the uh, save. I mean, available through the saved copy, like you know. Okay. But why we want to do this? Why we want to create a pretty much like a copy of the database, and then save it somewhere, okay. a secure location, and then if needed, you can. Uh, replace it uh, uh, from that saved copy. Now the question is why we want to do that? To protect from like unknown like What's that? To protect from any kind of disaster. If, in, uh, if something happened okay. to database is corrupted or in a, somebody accidentally dropped something to recover a database. Or maybe like power power failure. Um, so I like the word, uh, I like that, uh, I like the fact that you use the word disaster. So basically backup and we normally backup the databases to, to, um, in, uh, to make sure that we can recover the database in case there is a disaster. So what are the different different uh, uh, disaster uh, scenarios you can think about? What's that? User error. Or user error. error. Okay, user network, error. Network failure. Network failure. Mm, disk corruption. Disk corruption, okay. Or hardware, hardware, fail, uh, hard, hard, hardware. hardware failure. We can simply categorize, generalize it as hardware failure. Mm -hmm. So normally, um, the disaster can be categorized into two: one, hardware failure, and logical errors. What is logical? Error? Logical error is nothing but user errors. Accidentally, if you delete uh, uh, all the records from a table, that is also a disaster. So when a disaster happens, most of the time, almost all the companies, all the uh, uh, employers uh, uh, in the U.S., after, especially after September 11th, has a well-documented disaster recovery plan. Uh, I hope uh, all you, I mean, the company you are working with also have a, a well-tested disaster recovery plan. So. Backup and restore is one of the major component in um, in, your, in the disaster recovery plan. Please mute your microphone if you are not speaking. Appreciate that. Okay, so backup and restore is nothing but a, a prominent member in your disaster recovery plan. As one of the students explained, backup is nothing but a process which will create a copy of your database, not an exact copy, but it's, it's uh, you know, it pretend like it, you are creating a copy of the database and then keep it, then you need to uh, keep it in a secured location um, or as when I say secure location, I'm, I'm talking about a location which is available to you when, even when a disaster happens, okay? And then uh, yeah, when the disaster happens, then you need to uh, uh, recover the database from the backup created in that uh, secured location. So this is what our plan of backup and restore. So this is a very generalized uh, uh, situation I just explained. But every, I mean, each company's situation is different. So we cannot have a generalized disaster recovery plan for our database. 
the disaster recovery plan is completely on for your database is completely depends on what your requirement is that is one of the most important uh, dimension you need to consider when you when you when you are designing your disaster recovery plan what you are trying to achieve in that dimension one of the key attribute in that dimension is how much data you can lose if there is a disaster happens there is a very good chance that there is some data loss i mean that is a well accepted fact if you cannot afford a uh, data loss then instead of disaster recovery solution you need to go for what anybody if you if based on your business you the, your business cannot even lose a single byte of data in case there is a disaster then instead of a disaster recovery plan what you will go with clustering or uh, maybe daniel maybe, yes clustering uh, so well, clustering is one way to implement that so through clustering what you are implementing higher correct high availability yeah. solution so a uh, high available so disaster recovery and high availability solution are two different things disaster recovery solution tells what are the steps necessary step should be taken when there is a disaster so that you can recover the the, the data you lost okay so they cover the database you lost but no matter how well planned it is the disaster recovery most of the time um uh, will will face some in uh, some data loss now the question is how much data you can lose well that is a that is a decision come from from the business side of your company please mute your microphone again if you're not speaking um so based on that decision how much data you can lose you can plan or customize this backup and restore operation okay so um so that is a gen uh, general introduction to a backup and restore scenario um the backups there are so many different type of backups available in sql server one is the most well the different the most prominent one is the full backup then we have differential backup after that we have transaction log backup so full backup differential backup and transaction log backup are the three main backups available in sql server in addition to this there are three more backups one is partial backup the uh, the next one is file group backup and then we have copy only backup so there are six different type of backups available in sql server and we will go through one by one but the major one is uh, full backup differential backup and transaction log backup similarly if you look into the restore process there are a couple of different ways you can restore it one is uh, the normal restore uh, the second one is piecemeal restore then page restore file group restore and then we will also have something called database snapshots so there are a couple of other ways you can restore the database so let's get started with the backup operation so to explain the backup i mean even before we actually see the steps needed to backup the database let me uh, show you a scenario here so you have a database and your backup plan is in such a way that every day 1 am in the morning you will go for a you will create a full backup i will explain what a full backup is in a minute and then at 10:43 am database crashed
okay so 1 am every day 1 am in the morning you create a every day at okay every day 1 am in the morning you create a full backup of your database okay and then assume that today uh, at 10:43 am your database crashed what steps you will take when you see that the database is crashed you will try to find out where the backup created at 1 a.m. in the morning and then you will restore that to the database so that you can recover the database are you with me so far hello Yes, yes. But what is the drawback of this? Yep. If you restore the backup created at 1 a.m. in the morning, what is the drawback with that? Well, whatever data changes happen between 1 a.m. and 10.43 a.m. is gone. Am I correct? If yes, you, but if then you, you can re recover those from the transaction log. Well, we don't have a transaction log. We only have our back. The, the backup strategy is create a full backup every day at 1 a.m. We are not creating any other backups. Okay. So whatever changes happen between, because when you restore a database backup created at 1 a.m. and later if you use that backup to restore the database, what you are actually doing you are making the database to a 1 a.m. state so what all the data changes happen in between will be deleted I mean not deleted it's gone it's not about deleting but what when you create a full backup there is a BAK file get created and that BAK file contains all MDF file, NDF file, and LDF files. And um, the extension of the BAK file is .bak. But if you cannot lose that kind of data based on your company policy, you cannot, I mean here you are losing pretty much like 9 hours and 43 hours worth of data. And if you cannot lose that kind of information based on your company policy, well, you need to customize, you need to add more steps into this backup process. The next step you can implement is something called differential backup. You can set up a differential backup every 30 minutes so you after the full backup every 30 minutes what you are doing every 30 minutes you are doing a, a differential backup so what I can say is 1.30 a.m. there is a differential backup, right? 2 a.m. there is a differential backup. Keep on going like that. So when is the last differential backup will be created here? 10.30. 10.30. So there are... Oh, okay. No, what's that? No, because in this particular day, the last differential backup created is at 10.30 a.m. in the morning. Then 10.43, the database crashed. Are you with me so far? Yes, yes. What is there in the differential backup? 
in the full backup the bak file uh, contain the backup file or the file with the bak extension contains all the mdf ndf and L, uh, ldf files but what is there in the differential backup when you create a differential backup still the file extension is going to be bak and what is there in the bak in that particular bak file it's a difference between uh, the 1 a.m. backup and then the 10.30 backup. I Correct. mean, if it's 1.30 means the 30 minutes backup. Correct. So and when you create, 30? yes, go ahead. No, no, that, that's all. Okay. So when you create a full backup, you are creating an exact copy of your database. Right? That's a full, that's why we call it as full backup. But when you create a differential backup, it contains all changes between now and the last full backup. Very, very important. So 10.30 a.m. differential backup contains whatever changes happen between 10.30 and the last full backup which is at 1 a.m. Am I correct? Not yes. still backup, it's full backup, sorry about that. How about the back the differential backup I taken, uh, so the, sorry, automatically taken at 10.30 a.m. What information will be there? It file, that file, that BAK file contains all the data changes between 10.30 a.m. and the last full backup which is at 1 o'clock. So whatever data changes between 10.30 a.m. and 1 a.m. will be there in the differential backup. Got my point? Yes, Daniel. So can I say differential is a cumulative backup? Yes or no? Yes. So differential backups are always cumulative backups. Because it always contains whatever data change happened now, between now and the last full backup. So Daniel, the last uh, the last uh, differential backup would be the cumulative one, right? That's what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Okay. The backup differential the backup, backup created at 2 a.m. contains what? 1:30. Yeah, 1:32. So keep on going like that. Okay. So 10:30 would have 10 o'clock one, correct? Yes. Or would it have anything, everything from 1:30 all the way till? No, it, it, it has everything from 1 a.m. to 1.30 a.m. Oh, okay, at 2 a.m., right? Not 2 a.m. What is the definition here? All changes between now, now means 10.30, right? and the last full backup. When did you create the last full backup? The 1 o'clock? Yes. So whatever change happened between 1.30 a.m. and 1 o'clock will be there in this highlighted differential back. Okay. Got my point? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Daniel? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, so the 10:30 a.m. what the differential backup uh, that contains everything what happens between 1 a.m. and 10 up to 10:30, right? Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh -huh. But what is there in that BAK file? I mean, now we know it's uh, um, whatever changes happen between now and the last full backup, but does that BAK file contains all the MDF, NDF, L and LDF files or it contains something else? 
pages contain extend i mean uh, pages which are changed yes in a differential backup file it only contains all data all i would say generalize uh, all pages which has been changed after the last full backup very important point the differential backup contain backup file contains it doesn't contain mdf file or ndf file or ldf file it contains all the pages which has been changed after the last full backup got my point yes no i need some feedback yes yes okay all right so now the database crashed at 1043 what steps we can take to recover it you can first thing you can do is restore uh, the database using up to one right. and then 10:30 one 1 a.m. full backup, right? Yeah. That is the step number one you need to take. So when you restore the 1 a.m. full backup, you are bringing the database to a 1 a.m. stage. Am I right? Then on top of that, you need to restore you need to restore uh, from the differential backup. Yes. 10.30 a.m. diff backup. Differential backup. So in that way, you are bringing the database to uh, 10.30 until you are bringing the database to a 10.30 a.m. state how much data how much data you are losing in at this point 15 minutes 13, Thir 13 minutes of data will be minutes. lost 13 yeah so now it's very clear that by adding a 30 minutes differential backup you are really bringing the data loss to just 13 minutes comparing to a 9 hours and 43 minutes without the differential backup. Okay. Give me a second, couple of uh, messages in the chat window, let me take a look. That is correct, Kelvin. Yes, I will. I'm going to explain that. Okay. No, Kunal. No, that every time when a differential backup is created. Um, you its system will automatically create a backup file with a timestamp so the timestamp will make sure that it will not overwrite again and again so that is the first question um, also does that mean we lost data between 1020 and 1043 right now well yes I mean not 1020 because the last differential backup created at 1030 so whatever data change happened between 1030 and 1043 is gone is the differential backup configure example yes 
you can configure all the different type of backups you can configure you can automate the full backup differential backup and the transaction log backup using scheduled jobs which we will see later okay kunal okay so now so at this point we are losing 13 minutes uh, of data right but your my company cannot even afford that my management says that is too much data we cannot do that we cannot go with that we need to find a solution to minimize the um, the data loss to probably uh, less than five minutes well what you can two options you what you can do is you can run the differential backup every five minutes well that is not recommended because when you try to run the differential backup what know the drawback of the differential backup is while the backup is taken it is putting a, a some kind of lock on the page level and you don't want to do that too much differential backup is bad So what is the next option you have? What you can do is you can introduce a new type of backup which is called as transaction log backup. What is a transaction log backup? Well, in the transaction log backup, what exactly happening is it will create a copy of what is there in the transaction log and store it as a backup file. It's very simple. It just create a copy of what is there in the transaction log and store it separate. That is what called as a transaction log backup. So transaction log backup can be run very frequently because it is not involved or it doesn't generate any kind of locking issues in the database so you transaction log backup can be run very frequently so since my management said we cannot afford to lose more than five minutes of data I decided to run transaction log every five minutes. So at 11.05, there is a transaction log running. Sorry, 10, one of, 1.05, there is one running. 1.10, one other running. Keep on 2.05, you know, keep on running that. Every five minutes, there is a transaction log running. So if you look at the transaction log created uh, before the database crashed, you can see that there is a transaction log created at 10.40 no every 5 minutes I said every 5 minutes so there is one created at 10.35 a.m. right yeah but then there's one more at 10.40 also right? then 10.40 uh, there is another one created You're going to okay. lose three minutes in this case, three minutes of data. Yes, and that is well within our limit because my management said it cannot afford more than five minutes of data, but that means three minutes is well within the limit, right? Please mute your microphone if you're not speaking. Uh, Calvin said... Uh, all of the latest committed transactions well I will get into that in a minute so what file get created when you do a transaction log backup the transaction log backup extension is TRN for the full backup and differential one it is BAK but for the transaction log it is uh, TRN and what is there in the dot TRN file the dot TRN file contains 
whatever is, whatever is there in the transaction log at the time you are creating the transaction log backup. Tara, can you mute your microphone? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought uh, mine is and Today I'm using my iPhone and it's giving me sort of problems. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, no problem, but I, I know you are eating some snacks that make me hungry, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so the .trn file contains whatever there what whatever was there at the time of the backup in the transaction log so if you look at the data or the content in the backup file in the full backup you it contains mdf ndf and ldf files in the differential one it only contains 8 kilobyte pages which has been modified after you create the full backup in the transaction log, it's nothing but a copy of the transaction log at that point of time. But the most important thing you need to uh, remember uh, about the transaction log backup is after each so each tran backup. transaction log will be truncated. Do you remember that? After each so since the transaction log is truncated after each backup, do you think the transaction log backup is cumulative? What is there, let me ask you this, what is there in the transaction log backup created at 10.35 a.m.? Come on guys. What all, is... Th all the changes after the differential backup? No, it doesn't contain any data changes. It contains... Transaction log current, entries. Uh, transaction log changes. Yes. Minutes. Transaction log entries corresponding to changes happened between 10:30 and 10:35. And what is there in the transaction log backup created at 10:40? I mean, it is the committed changes, Daniel, or no? It's not. No, it's not the committed changes. Whatever there are. Uh, in the transaction log at that point of time. If the user committed, then doesn't matter. It doesn't only matter. The data, only the data, only the data from diff, uh, from 1030, 1030 to 1040. No, we. I don't want to call it as a data. I would say data means we normally talk about eight kilobyte data pages. The best the way we can explain is the, if you if the, whatever if you ask me what is there in the transaction log backup created at 1040, I will say all the entries made between 1035 and 1040. Am I correct? All yes. the entries in the transaction log which has been made after 1035 and before 1040. Yes. But you said 35 will 10:35 uh, a.m. Uh, file will be deleted, right? As soon as 10:40 uh, is created. No, the the file will, you cannot never delete a transaction log file while the database is operation. It will delete the entries in the transaction log. Yeah, that's good enough, right? Then you don't have any data in the file. That is correct. So well, there are entries made between 10.30 and 10.35 and that is there here. But when I create the transaction log at 10.35, transaction log backup at 10.35, all the entries in that transaction log is gone after that. Am I right? Yes. 
as soon as uh, the 1040 uh, no no not 1040 uh, when i create the transaction log at 10, backup at 1035 it will copy whatever is the, the entries in the transaction log at that point of time okay create a .trn file and keep it there and then it will delete those entries from the transaction log so just after the transaction log backup created at 1035 the transaction log is completely empty got my point but still but the, the original original transaction log is empty right yes no originally yes i mean when the, the original, original log is empty okay uh, yes then but you are the sql engine is keep on writing more and more entries into the transaction log so the moment you clear out the existing transaction log the next second there will be new entries coming in right because there are transactions keep on going so when you create the transaction log backup at 10 third 40 well it contains that be that dot trn file contains all the entries made into the transaction log after 10 35 and now it will create a dot trn which copy the data there and then it will wipe out whatever the existing records in the transaction log and it moves on so oh. unlike the differential backup transaction log backups are not cumulative oh i got to hear okay that's what i'm getting confused okay in the in in the differential you have the dif uh, the changes between 1 and then the 10 uh, 1030 but with the transaction log, you don't have like that, right? I mean, yes. just five, five minutes. Yes, okay. correct. That's a main so difference. When you need, then you need to do with the each TRN file then. That is, the, that is the overall point, I mean, overall idea about this discussion. Okay. Okay, thank you. Daniel, Daniel, I, Daniel I got confused. Okay. Uh, you said that the 10.40 a.m. transaction log backup, it will contain the, there is not 10 30 a.m. transaction log. 10 10 40 10 40 okay 10 40 yes 10 40 transaction log backup contains each entry whatever in transaction log backup happened at 10 35 between 10 30 no no the 10th of 40 transaction log backup contains whatever entries made into the transaction log between 10.40 and after 10.35 a.m. So it's between the backup then uh, if something happened to tran original transaction log and it changes, it won't back up that one? What do you mean by original transaction log? Because 10.35 is a backup copy, right? 10 there is a AM is transaction log backup is a copy of the original backup. No, original not original because we have a transaction log backup created at 1032. Somewhere here, because we are doing it every, I mean, I did not clearly mention this, but every five minutes there is a transaction log backup. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So 1030 AM also there is a transaction. So 1030 AM both happens. You have a transaction log backup as well as a differential backup. Got my point? No, I did not. Uh, yeah, I did not clear it. Then 10, uh, 25, you have another transaction log backup at 10, 25. Give me a second. I, I will explain that in a minute, okay? So now tell me what is there in the transaction log backup created at 10.30 a.m. What information will be there? Whatever entry is uh, in 10.25 transaction log backup, it will contain in 10.30. Okay. Entries in the in the okay in the uh, transaction log log between 1030 and 1025 the last tran backup mm -hmm. am i correct yeah 
and you can find figure out when is the last strand back which is 1025 how about 1035 what entry will be there the transaction log created at 1035 between 1030 and 1035 yes if that is the case what entry will be there in the transaction log created at 1040 between 1040 and 1035 right yeah is it clear now no still I'm thinking my question is that okay if we schedule a very first transaction log backup it will contain all the entries from the transaction log mm -hmm. original transaction log and then um, that original transaction log is going to be truncated yes right mm -hmm. and now 1030 uh, uh, and we schedule every five minute backup so 1030 we have transaction log backup after that 1035 it will contain only the entry from the 1030 but what happens if the original transaction log is again filled out no no there is, there is no or origin there is only one transaction log right mm -hmm. so when a transaction log backup is created what exactly happening it will create it will create a copy of whatever entries in the transaction log at that point of time mm -hmm. okay and then create and save it as a trn a file with a trn extension and save it somewhere that is not a transaction log it is just a copy of copy. Not, mm -hmm. not yeah, it's a, just a backup of it. Mm -hmm. Then the only one the the tran the original transaction log file will be truncated. That means yeah. all the entries in the transaction log will mm -hmm. be deleted. Okay. Okay. And uh, and deleted at that point. But again, there are more transactions happening in the database, so more and more entries will be added onto that transaction log. So what I'm trying to say here is there is no concept of multiple, there is only one transaction log and every time when a transaction log backup created, whatever the entries is there at that point in that transaction log will be backed up and once the backup is done, everything will be deleted from the transaction log. So uh, take a look, I mean, uh, probably it will be more clear to you when we actually do the restore process. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't understand, even after the restore process, uh, you can uh, uh, tell me at that time. Okay. No, I got it now. No, okay. It's okay. So, well. Daniel, okay, I have a question. Daniel. Yes, go ahead. So the differential backup, uh, like at 1030, uh, it's going to be only one file or it's like, uh, because it's a cumulative, right? So from, it started at 1 o'clock in the night, every half an hour differential backup. So today morning, 1030, I'm going to have only one file, which is cumulative. No, it will be, it will be multi to for each more. backup, it will be differential, different files. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But even if we have multiple differential backup files, we only use the file created at 10.30 a.m. for the restore purpose. Yeah. Unless you yeah. want to restore it into a 2 a.m., let's say something uh, drastically went wrong, some accidental changes happen after 2 a.m. and you want to restore it back to 2 a.m. state, instead of 10.30 a.m., you go for a differential backup created at 2 a.m. in the morning. Okay, okay. So, yeah, sure, got it. Because with the latest file uh, that is uh, differential backup taken at 10.30 a.m., I cannot say that go only until 2 o'clock in the night. No, you cannot do that. If you want to do that, well, yes, you need okay. to do, you need to use the appropriate differential backup, which is the one created at 2 a.m. Okay. in the morning. 
Okay, and the other question is like uh, for the transactional uh, log backup, very first time when it when we take the backup from this time minus five minutes. That is the five minutes time interval we specified, right? So very first time we take that kind of uh, data or full transaction log, uh, whatever is available at that point of time. Are you asking me when we schedule this or? So usually like my understanding is transaction log we can specify that take the backup every five minutes, right? No, you cannot do that with the transaction log. You need to create a separate job for that. All these operation creating a full backup at 1 a.m., creating differential backup at every 30 minutes, creating transaction log backup every five minutes are scheduled jobs in SQL Server. Yes, so that part, yeah. So very first time I am creating a new SQL job for transaction log backup and uh, very first time uh, I specified like take for every five minutes. So the job started first time at, uh, for example, 10.30 uh, in the morning. So it takes the, the file, the TRM file is going to have the data from 10.25 to 10.30 or like Whatever is available. No, the, the first time when time that scheduled job runs, when the first time, uh, first time when the scheduled job runs, again, whatever doesn't matter um, with, uh, what entries is there in the transaction log because maybe the transaction may, log may contain the last 24 hours of entries. Doesn't matter. Whatever yeah. entries in the transaction log at the time of the transaction log backup will be there in the transaction log backup creator. So that means it's going to have all the 24 hours of data. Uh, Correct. The first time it will, if, uh, the, if uh, the transaction log okay, okay. contains entries in the last 24 hours when it is trying to do the first transaction log backup, well, that transaction log contains all those entries. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, okay. And again, like even uh, if the recovery model is simple, then all this concept is... No, no. If uh, the recovery right? model is simple, uh, trans you cannot create a transaction log on a database which is recovery model simple. Yeah, yeah. So it should be full basically. It, it has to be either full or bulk logged. Oh, bulk logged. Transaction okay. log option is disabled for a database which is uh, in a simple recovery model. We will see that later. Okay. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so let's come back to, uh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, is this timing what we said, is it like pretty much optional or do we have any, I mean. The transaction log backup? Anything like we, we gave a break of like five minutes each or like 30 minutes yeah. each. Yeah, it all depends on how much data you can lose. Why we went, went with a differential one? Because we, our management said, I mean, uh, it, the, the, uh, it can lose only uh, up to five minutes of data. Right, so if it, if it cannot afford more than five minutes of data, a couple of options, you can create a full backup every five minutes, which you don't want to create, do that. Then the next option is a differential backup so that you are creating a 30 minutes incremental backups, right? Then, but you don't want to run that very often like five minutes, so you will go for a transaction log backup. Again, it all depends on how much data you want to lose. Is that concept clear to you? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Man. Yeah, Larry said service level agreement. Yes, SLA. It's, it will be mentioned in the SLA how much data uh, can, maximum data can be lost based on the setup you are making. That's correct, Larry. Okay, now let's come back here. So now we want to add the transaction log backup into this restore chain. So as we uh, uh, see, the transaction logs are not cumulative. So we cannot just use the last transaction log backup. We need to use all the transaction log backups needed here. So can you tell me after restoring 
uh, the database using the 10:30 a.m. differential backup, what should I do? Restore all the available transaction log. All available transaction logs. All the transaction logs. The two, the two, the two transaction logs at 10:35 and 10:40. Yes, you need not have to yes. go and. Uh, restore the 10.25 or 10.30 because you already made the database to a 10.30 a.m. state. Am I correct? So yeah. now only thing you need to do is Okay, so give me a second. All right, so now you need to restore the database using 10.35 a.m. Tran backup. Right? And by doing that, you are bringing the database to a 10.35 a.m. state. Am I correct? Hello? Then on top of that, you need to apply the transaction log backup created at 10.40 a.m. and bringing the database to a 10.40 a.m. state. That's it. That's the last backup can be created. So that last uh, entry in the, uh, the restore chain. So how much data you lose here? Three minutes, right? Yes. You only losing three minutes worth of data here in this setup. And in the transaction log backup, so restore, when you restore the full backup, what is happening? When you restore the full backup, what exactly happening behind the scenes? Database will be back to uh, at one o'clock. Yeah, but how how it's happening? What well to understand how what is happening, you need to look into what is there in the BAK file. It contains a copy of MDF, kind of a copy of MDF, NDF, and LDF file, and the existing database MDF, LDF, and NDF file will be replaced by what is there in the Original file. Okay. So that is pretty, and then what? Okay, that is once that is done, well, it will apply the differential backup. When you apply, when you restore the database using the differential backup, which is something we did here in this particular step, what exactly happened behind the scene? On guys, it's putting all the change, change pages. Yes, what is there in the differential backup? The differential backup contains all the pages which has been changed by after the last full backup, right? So the differential BAK file contains all the eight kilobyte pages which has been modified. So when you restore the database using the differential one, what it does, it will replace the existing those existing 8 kilobyte pages with the one available in the BAK file, am I correct? Hello? Did you get my point? Uh oh. Can you explain it again? Yes. What is there in the BAK file, the, trans the differential log uh, so differential backup log, uh, backup file. What is there in this particular file? Diff backup created at 10:30 a.m. All the change change pages between 10, 10 and 10:30. Correct. So when I restore. The database using uh, the differential backup created at 10.30 a.m., what exactly happening behind the scene? It just 
making the changes, applying placing the changes after the one o'clock. Well, yes, center. but how 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 it works? How it's making the changes? It is replacing pages. It is replacing the pages. That is correct. Correct. Okay. So, but how about when you restore a transaction log back? So when you're restoring the full backup, you are replacing the MDF, LDF, or NDF file. When you're restoring the differential one, you are replacing the, the, the pages which has been changed. Now the question is what is happening behind the scene when you try to restore the transaction log backup file? It will append all the changes. It will append all the changes, but how does it do that? With no target. Yeah, but how exactly, I mean in the full backup we saw replacing the, M the data file and the log file. In the differential, we saw replacing the data files, data pages itself. How we append the records in using the transaction when you restore the transaction log backup? Well, if you look at the transaction log backup, what is there in the transaction log backup file? It is just having the changes Correct. made after the differential backup. Correct. It has entries about what are the changes happened in the database uh, during that particular time. Am I correct? Yes. So what it does is it will replay each and every SQL engine try to replay each and every entry in the transaction log backup. So if, if it is trying to replay all the entries in the transaction log backup created at 10.35 a.m what exactly it is doing. Step by step it is moving the database from a 10.30 a.m. stage to a 10.35 a.m. stage. Then you apply the 10.40 transaction log backup so from 10.35 it's move, it is applying it is replaying each and every entry in the transaction log backup created at 1040 to bring the database to a 1040 a.m. state. So when you restore a transaction log backup, you are the SQL engine, only thing SQL engine does is simply replay each and every step in that transaction log backup. Did you get my point? Hello? Can you explain one more time, Daniel? This yes. One? After the differential, like, can After you After the differential, when you try to restore the transaction log backup file created at 1035, what the system will do is, system will take a look at what is there in the transaction log backup file created at 1035 and try to replay every step listed in that. When you re when the SQL engine replay every steps in the transaction log, it is recreating all the data changes happened between 10:30 and 10:35. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Then when you restore the transaction log created at 10:40, the system will replay each and every entry in the transaction log create backup created at 1040 which contains and so it is recreating or recreating or re-updating the data changes happen between 1035 and 1040. So when you restore a transaction log it is not replacing anything it is actually replaying the data changes happen in that particular in that duration of time. Okay. Because of this you can say even if you are restoring the 1040 AM uh, transaction log backup, you can specifically tell the system, 
hey, don't restore the database to 1040. Stop it at stop it at 10, 1040. 10, 37 and even 45 seconds. You can say that. This is what we called as anybody? Point in, point in time, point in time recovery. recovery. The only reason why it is possible because it is replaying each and every entry in the transaction log. So if you say, okay, recover everything till 10.37.45, it will not execute any entries in the transaction log with a timestamp more than 10, 37, and 45 seconds. Hey Daniel, uh, then uh, like this point in time recovery, whatever entries are after 10, 37, it will uh, dis uh, discard it? Yes. For example, well, the database never get crashed. I mean, there is nothing wrong with the database. How about this situation? Accidentally, my programmer deleted uh, all the records from a particular table at 10.38 a.m. So, 10.38 a.m., there is an accidental delete operation happen, and he reported that to me at 10.43. Okay, he reported that to, that to me at 10.43. So 10.43, well, I decided that, you know, uh, I will bring the database into a single user mode because I don't want anybody to keep on adding data here. I will put it into a single user mode so that I have the only access. Nobody else can make a connection to this database. Then um, I verify that he made that mistake probably after 8, 10, 38. So what I will do is recover everything to 10, 37, and 59 seconds. Got my point? So I am recovering the database to a 10, 37, and 59 seconds. But what we are losing here, we are losing whatever changes happen between this time 10, 30, let's say 10, 40, and so 10, 38, and 10, 43. Did you understand this? Hello? I have a question, Daniel. Yes. Uh, once you restore uh, using all the backups, um, those backups files are still be useful or is going to be invalid? No, it will still be useful, yes. So if you want to do restore some other instance using the same backup, we can do it, right? Correct. If it is an accidental delete, sometimes, you know, instead of restoring the production database, you restore all these things into a temporary, I mean, a development database, and then by that way you can see those data which has been deleted by the user, right? And then copy it over to the production database, if it is possible. So, uh, Daniel, I have one question. Uh -huh. So one thing is, at least in our environment, like we have triggers, like something got inserted, particular tables. Uh -huh. So then, depending on the, uh, when the trigger happens, we in, you know, increment the version counter in the table. So when application reads that version information, and if there is any change, it tries to update some information. Well, in so the same data, in the, in the same table, database. Yeah, in the same database. Okay. If you replay again from the transaction. Uh, log uh, the backup, then again the triggers, everything is going to fire and everything, right? No, no, the trigger will not file. It is when you replay, yes, I mean, the transaction log doesn't have any entry about the trigger firing or anything like that. But it has entry about 
the data change caused by that trigger? Um, something in, you know, like, for, for example, this is the update trigger or in, uh, update yeah. trigger. So the so transaction log contains update, entry yeah. about that update statement. Yes, so that is going to replay, then automatically the trigger is going to be executed. No, 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 no. When I say yeah. replay, that, that doesn't mean that it is going to fire the DML, DDL statements. No, it never do that. The transaction okay, log entries okay. contains what data got changed and then it will replay okay, that. Okay. Okay. Don't assume that when I say okay. replay, um, it, it system is not going to replay the DML or DDL statement. No. Okay, okay. Let's say somebody creates a small table in, in those Got it. few minutes, then... Mm -hmm. That will also be recovered, yes. Using the transact, there will be an entry in the transaction log. So, but if there is any, let's say you are um, a database in a bulk uh, logged uh, recovery model, and then if there is any mass insert happens, somewhere in between this uh, uh, chain of backups, that cannot be recovered. Hey Daniel, I have one question. Yes. Like if you if you are doing restoring from production to development database or test mm -hmm. database, and uh, if uh, there are uh, triggers created in development or test database but not in production, so if you restore the database from production to uh, other, other environment, do we need to recreate the trigger? Yes. So we, we have to keep, uh, we have to keep track of all, each and every object before we do the store. Yes. Yeah, so what normally what we will do is we will keep keep a one one single script containing all these ob you know, objects need to be created, right? And mm -hmm. then after every time you restore your development environment from a backup coming from a production, you simply run the script and script will go and create all these objects in one shot. Okay. Thank you. So Daniel, one other question, like uh, I want to double check my understanding, mm -hmm. so related to the transaction log thing, like for example at 1040 and 1045 we took uh, transaction log backups and as no, you no, mentioned 1030 like 1030 and 1035. Yeah, 10, 10, uh, for example, okay, 1030 and 1035 and, and 1042, somebody, okay. um, 1040 also in mm -hmm. between like 1038 somebody by mistake removed something and then we are going to replay only small part of uh, the point recovery thing mm -hmm. using the uh, transaction log backup taken at 1040 right correct so when when we do that we are going to like uh, uh, for example we ran only for one minute from 38 to 39 no, so no, you cannot do that. You cannot, you cannot say, you cannot say um, uh, replay everything between um, 10.36 and 10.37. No, no, you cannot. You always need to start from the start of the transaction log backup, but you can specifically say when it will end. Is that what you are asking me? Okay, okay. Yeah, that is one yeah. thing. If that is the case, for example, I am telling from 35 to 38. Okay, mm -hmm. so then am I going to lose the data from 39 and 40 in yes. two minutes? Yes. I'm not going to. You are going to lose that data. Oh, okay. Okay, but it's not going to run, in, uh, run any command uh, instructions, right? So whatever happened before, that should be there. I'm sorry, uh, whatever, I'm sorry, what did you say? So whatever, uh, for example, um, between 10.35 and 10.40, already the database is updated and everything is working fine, right? So that means even between 10.38 and 10.40, the database is updating a lot of things and it's fine. And now we know that only for a particular minute there is a problem and not particular minute. From 35 to 38, we ran the uh, transaction like backup, but it should not affect the already updated data or whatever data between 38 and 40, right? No, no, you cannot do that. You can always start replaying the transaction log file from the begin of the transaction log, but 
uh, and then you can specifically say when it should end but you cannot give a begin and end start and end time. Yeah, that, that part I understood. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, Daniel, I'm not clear, I think. So I'm specifying from 35, like the start is 35 to 38. Okay. So it is running all the instructions for um, that are there for those three minutes. Uh -huh. So, but it is not running the instructions that are there uh, during 39 and 40, that those two minutes. Right? Correct, that is correct. So that means it's not affecting, it's not changing anything that happened between 39, the minute 30, 10, 30, 9th and 10, 40th minute, those two minutes. It's not touching anything. It is not recovering, not touching it. It, 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 it I would say it is not recovering whatever changes happen in a bit uh, after th 10, 38 a.m. Yeah, so, yeah, so whatever previously happened, it is not changing or it's not doing anything. Basically. It is not so recovering, no, no, it's not recovering, so that means that data is gone. We need so data change happen the database after. Already... No, no, the database, okay, I mean, when we restore the database, well, we, when the, when we restore the full backup, we are bring the database into a 10 a.m. sorry 1 a.m. state that means whatever data was available at 1 a.m. is there after I restore the full backup right the moment you start yeah. the restore process hmm. whatever data you had at the time of the crash is gone okay okay so that part I understood like for example 1040 I don't have any crash until 1040 everything is working fine. Yes, but then okay, in the morning, 1040 so could, everything was yeah. working fine but the moment you even if the database everything is 100% right but the moment you start the restore process whatever the, the data available at 1043 a.m. in your database is gone. Okay. Hmm. It, it's gone. I mean, it is no, no. not recoverable anymore. Then, by step by step, we are rebuilding that database, right, to the earliest or the latest possible version of that database. Yeah. It is pretty much okay. like, a, you know, destroying, completely destroying a building and then you are trying to rebuild one level at a time to to the max you can go. Yeah, that part I understood. Uh, my question is like, we are not destroying anything. Everything is like, uh, until 1040, current time is 1040, until 1040 there is no problem, everything is working fine. But, in 1037 somebody came to me and told me like, oh okay, I, by mistake I removed the data from one table only for in that particular minute then I'm not going to use any backup file, just I want to use the transaction log to get the data back. No, you so cannot do that. in this case, I'm going to, oh, I cannot do that? No, you cannot do that. Okay. Okay, okay, got it, darling. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, now one question. If I restore the 10.40 a.m. transaction log prior to 10.45, what will happen? So 10.35. If I try to restore the 10.40 a.m. transaction log prior to restoring the 10.35 a.m. transaction log, what will happen? You will get an error. Okay. Why? The LSN is out of sequence. Yes. The error clearly says MSN, so log sequence number is out of sequence. Why? Why that happens? Problem? Because you are using like 1041 before the 1035. Yes. So what is the log sequence? Log sequence number, the system, no, let's say 
after creating the differential backup, the latest log sequence number is this in the transaction log. Okay, the latest LSN is uh, LSN is five six seven six seven after the differential one. When we restore the next backup, system is expecting which LSN? LSN greater than this number. Not just simply greater than, it is going to be what log sequence number, it has to be in a sequence, right? So it has to be 8. Yeah. And in the case of 1040, maybe the locks and then this log sequence, so in this case, the log sequence number run from 567 to probably, let's say, uh, 7009. Right? Yes. That is the range of LSN in this particular transaction log packet. And what LSN I expect in the backup created at 1040? It's supposed to be? 7009. Not 9. Ten. It's ten. 1 to 10. ten. Yes. something like that. So if you try to restore the 1040 AM transaction log backup prior to 1035, what happened is, well, after the uh, differential backup, the last log sequence number is 56767, and the next one you are trying to introduce to the SQL engine is 7010. So there is a, so the, either the log sequence number is not in sequence, am I right? So the moment it see a, yeah. a log sequence number which is not in sequence, it will yell at you saying that the log sequence number is not in order or in sequential. But there is a maximum limit, right? Daniel, is it what is me by a cap chain broken? Yes, it is called as the log sequence number chain broken, yes. How, how would you fix that? How would you? Well, there is no way you can fix it. You need to provide the appropriate backup with the sequential log sequence number. I mean, there is no other way you can fix it. If the log sequence number chain is broken, I mean, there is no way you can fix it. I mean, that means it's not about the fix. You are missing some of the files in that backup chain. That is what it means. The reason I ask is like one of this is one of the question like um, uh, the interview question they asked me, you know, yes. how would you fix like if backup chain is broken? Yes. I mean there is no way you can fix it. You need to provide because there is no way you can manually go and make a change in the lock sequence number. It's all taken care of by the system. So the only way you can fix it is give the appropriate backup with the next log sequence number. Because if you have a backup chain like this, system should have created the backup with sequential log sequence number, I mean the, the, the backup with the sequence. But when you restore it, you are not restoring it the appropriate sequence it is created. That's a problem. That is when it is called as broken. So, so, but Daniel, this there will be a maximum limit, right? It's some for LS number, then it has to round like it has to come back to zero something, right? Uh, that I'm not sure. Larry, are you aware about uh, a maximum number for the log? I don't think there's a maximum number available for log sequence. I'm no, not sure. No, it just reset when we do the full backup again. It reset? I think it's reset when we do the full backup again, right? No. It's create the new set. 
you when we do the full backup, then it re, it's stuck the new chain, right? Yes, it, yeah, that is true. Yeah, it's yeah, I remember that. Yes, when you restore, sorry, when you create a full backup, it will reset the lock sequence number to zero. Because oh, it is, it is, it is starting a new chain. As Larry mentioned, it is the the start of a new chain. Okay, okay, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Also, Daniel, I mentioned that um, it's good idea when we have a database crash. Uh, the first thing we want to do is that like, we uh, back up the tail or the log. So. Yes, I don't know. I mean, we will be covering that, but not at this point. What Larry mentioned is, I mean, at this point, I mean, we can, uh, we, we are sure that we can uh, recover everything till 1040. But there is something called tail lock backup, uh, uh, which is a technique you can use to even recover uh, anything, the data to till the last moment before the crash. That means, let's say the database crash at 430, 1043, you can, rec using the tail lock backup, you can move ahead and restore the database to 10, 42, and even 59 seconds. We will talk about the uh, tail lock backup after we see how this backup and restore can be done using point and click method and using the script. Okay, so let's take a break here. Um, it's 10.23, come back at 10.29, and then we will see uh, how you can actually do this point uh, the, the the backup and restore all right Daniel uh, one one thing one thing Daniel yes so what's happening is I'm using my phone and once I started using phone I'm not able to access the session from my lap uh, laptop so I, I sent you an email with uh, another email address, so can you give access to that also if possible? Uh, give me a second. Sure. Okay, I can do that. Give me a second. Daniel, regarding the 7 to, seven to 12 plus? Oh, I forgot, man. I'm sorry. You, I know you are going to kick me. Uh, <laughs> I completely forgot. I'm going to do that after today's class. <laughs> I'm so you. sorry. Thank you. Hey, Daniel. And also, is it okay? Can we can we call a restore tomorrow? I mean, if the whole class agrees, please. The restore. Yeah. You the mean the? Topic. Yeah, I mean we are not going to cover the restore. We are okay. probably today and even tomorrow we are going to cover the backups. Okay. Hey, hey Daniel, this is Janard. Yes. Yeah, today I can. The Daniel, I saw your videos only say class after class 17. I see 21 or something like that. Uh, 20. Uh, oh, no you did 18, not. I, you you did not download any of those. I just downloaded in class 17. That's my last video. Okay. Uh, so which one you are missing? I don't know after class 17. What are all there? Okay. I deleted that, assuming that you guys all delete. I mean. Uh, uh, I downloaded that, it. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I just I was not here on yesterday, the day before yesterday. Okay, I can uh, upload that. That's not a problem. And Daniel, uh, you you know yeah. that um, the password is not set for the download, right? Yes, there is no password, okay. but I am going to set it because I see a lot of uh, downloads happening. Um, I don't blame any of you, but uh, so I will put a new password. And then I will let everybody know. Okay, and there is a material also. I just see only class. Uh, I lost downloaded in class seventeen. Yeah. Well, whatever material I uploaded, it's all there. Only, only the videos you deleted it. Yes, only the videos I did. All the materials, research paper, everything is still there. Okay, then you need to upload class eighteen and nineteen. There. Okay, I will right. do that. I'm sorry, I was not here from past two days. So. No, no, not a problem. Yesterday I was here, but I don't know. I was unable to log on your meeting. I shoot an email actually to you. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, I don't know. It, it took me a long time actually. Why? Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw, but uh, eventually you got connected, right? 
No, actually what happened was I was connected using my another laptop. The internet was not connected properly. It's I so I closed it and I started using my another laptop, but then it's not allowing me to log in. What, 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 uh, yeah, because you try to connect using one laptop and then you need to wait 20 minutes to if you want to try. No, I waited language. 30 minutes actually. Oh really? Normally it's yeah. it's okay. I approved. Uh, that, uh, I approved your uh, Ravi. Your your registration has been approved. Oh, thank you. Okay, you will be getting an email from GoToMeeting pretty soon. Okay, yeah, I got it. Thank you. And Janardhan, I got a new registration. I mean, uh, request from you with a new That's email. A, just ignore that. Just ignore it. That. Well, that uh, that that is actually approved. Okay. Oh, you approved it. It doesn't matter because what oh, yesterday it keep asking me, so I put some details. I want to put some details, so I thought I can get an access. But later it say that you need to get an approval. So then later after 30, 35 minutes or forty minutes, I try to re log in with the same yes. ID. Are you doing right away or you can do it later also, that's not a problem. Okay, which one? Wh which one? Welcome the videos you can upload it later. Yeah, I will upload that later. Okay then. Yeah, shoot me an email once you upload it so I can okay. go to and do it. Okay then. Alright, Tarek, I believe uh, you made two connections. That will uh, trigger some um, uh, echo. If one of the connection you are not using, you can disconnect. Tarek? Are you talking to me, Mike? I'm yeah, doing that, Daniel. Okay, all right. Because I see two connections coming from you now. Okay, I think uh, you disconnected one. Okay, all right. So let's take a look at uh, how we can do the backup and restore. Well, before that, do you have any questions? Maybe I think uh, uh, this is the right time. I mean, normally, I discuss the tail lock backup um, uh, after I show you all the uh, different scripts uh, you need to use to backup and restore. Maybe since we have all this Excel ready, probably I can also explain what is a tail lock backup. So using this method, I mean, don't forget about this 1038 kind of stuff. Okay. So now, using this method, uh, you are pretty sure that you can restore the database to a 1040 AM state. That means you are losing 10, 3 minutes worth of data. But as a database administrator, when you see your database got crashed, don't get panic. Okay. The first thing you need to do is go and get a large cup of coffee. Okay. Because you may want to need that. Um, then you, what you have to first thing is don't go and restore start restoring the database that is what one of the mis I mean, mistake most of the dbs make they get panic and start restoring the database no don't do that you need to try for something called tail log backup so let me let's explain what a tail log backup is so after the database crashed at 10.43, let's say uh, at uh, 10.43 um, and 30 second, or let's say 10.45 a.m., what you will do is you will try to create something called tail log What is a tail log backup? Tail log backup is nothing but a transaction log backup. It's a uh, transaction log backup. But why it is called as a tail log backup? Anybody? Tail log backup is normally taken 
before you restore a database. And the reason why that it is called as stay lock backup because it contains it contains the tail of transaction log backup, so transaction log file. What what do you mean by tail of transaction log back uh, transaction log file? It contains all the last entries available in the transaction log file. In this particular um, uh, backup, in this particular transaction log backup, it contains whatever is there in the transaction log at the time of the crash. Do you understand what a tail log backup is? Tail log backup is nothing but a transaction log. You manually create it. This is not an automated process. Okay. It's a manual transaction log backup created by the DBA. And that transaction log backup contains the tail or all the last entries in the transaction log. Because of that, it is called as tail log backup. So we created, okay, let's say 1044. I mean, I don't want you to get confused. Make it as 1044. So then what you will do is, so, but you also need to understand that not every time you can create a tail log backup. If you want to create a tail log backup, then the transaction log for that particular database will be intact. Let's say the data file, one of the data, the primary data file got corrupted. That means the database will be offline, but again, the drive which contains the transaction log for that database is still up and running. If that, that's the case, you can create a tail log backup. In our case, somebody deleted all the rows from a table at 10.38 a.m. So there is nothing even wrong with the structure of the database. The database is up and running. So naturally you can create a tail log of that. So it is worth to try. I mean, again, if your database is crashed or something went wrong, don't go and start the restore process. The moment you start the restore process, your opportunity to create a tail log backup is gone. So even before you try to do this, this particular step, you need to try whether you can create a tail log backup. So in our case, let's assume that we could able to create the tail log backup. Okay. So there is a tail log backup, which is a transaction log backup, contains the last entries in the transaction log in this particular backup. Then you restore the full backup, restore the differential backup created at 10.30. Uh, the transaction log, restore the transaction log created at 1035 and again restore the transaction log backup created at 1040. Now what? So one question Daniel, the tail log backup for example in this case, is it going to get have the data from 1040 to 1044 or we, we don't know? It get the data from 1040 to 1043 a.m. in the transaction log file. Yeah, yeah, 1043, yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Then you will try to restore the tail log backup created at 1044 a.m. It's not, I would say, tail log backup. So if, let's say your database crashed exactly at 10.43, you can say um, uh, replay everything. Up to um, 42 and 50 seconds. So you can see that with the help of the 
tail log backup, you can bring the database to a 10, 42 and 50 seconds. So how much worth of data you are losing here? 10 seconds, right? 10 seconds worth of data you are losing here. Again, it doesn't work all the time, okay, but it is worth to try to create a tail log backup. The only time you can create it is before you start restoring. The moment you start restoring, your opportunity is gone. Daniel, if you don't mind, can you repeat it? what cases? We cannot create dialog backup. You mentioned few things. Well, I mean, if your 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 the the motherboard, if your uh, hard disk is gone, sorry, um, the motherboard of your uh, SQL Server is gone. So something like that, it is not a possibility. But yes. for example, I mean, if there is some accidental data change happened at 10:41, yeah, or or let's say you are uh, the disk, the primary disk containing. Uh, sorry, the disk containing the primary file group is corrupted. Okay. In that case, the database is not available anymore. It's crashed. Yeah. But assume that for the same database, the transaction log file may be in another drive, right? Yeah, yeah. So in that case, you can able to create a backup of that trans... Even if the database is not available online, still you can create a transaction log backup of that particular database using the script. You cannot do that using the point and click method, but you need a script to create that. So it is always a good idea to try to create the tail log backup so that you can recover the data to the very last minute. Okay, got it. Thank you. Any questions? Supriya, everything is clear for you? I'm trying to understand, uh, Daniel. It's totally new to me, so getting uh, all the things. You're confused? Yes, a, a little bit. Not a okay. little bit, like a lot. Yes. Uh, the yeah. only way uh, I can help you in this case is you need to review the videos. Y so, yes, I do that. Definitely. Yes. Um, so, well, again, this is uh, the most important concept uh, in uh, 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 as a DBA. So you must understand this. You need to. I mean, books talk. I mean, lot of books talk about what are the different ways you can back up and restore. But you need to get a complete picture so that you can you can decide what need to be done when the, there is a disaster okay i'll try to review i mean okay. as many as i can get okay all right okay. so um how about uh, sham smudhi i know you are uh, you are interactive how about rajani and sham i did not hear anything from you everything um, is life daniel. is good I almost daniel <laughs> almost. okay uh, can I ask you this, Daniel? Back to basics again. Yes. Like all, all, all we're talking about is like a database crash. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how it works in the real world, but uh, how about the whole of hardware uh, failure, like uh, the whole of hardware? Yeah. Even if the the entire hardware is failed, I mean the hardware failure. Uh, well, if you have a server with its own standalone hard disk, which we never see in a production environment. In production environment, even if you see E drive, F drive, but those are not local drives, right? It is coming from the SAN. It is actually a volume coming from the SAN exposed to a, a machine as E drive or F drive. So, with respect to that, if a hardware failure is a, um, I would say, is not a clear definition what exactly happened. If the motherboard of your physical server burned out, that is a hardware failure. If the NIC card is gone, 
that is a hardware failure okay but so let's say some of the hardware failure happened NIC card is gone or the motherboard is gone so only option is you need to bring a new hardware okay and then then what you need to create a new instance of the database there so not the database new instance of the SQL server because the other instance is gone then once it is created you need to restore the databases using the backup you created and stored somewhere in the network path or in the tape drive normally these backups will be stored somewhere in the network drive or in the tape drive you don't normally keep it in your local hardware because if the hardware is gone and if you store the backup in the hardware it's at the, that same machine itself you lost your backup too so you never do that we always keep it in the tape drive or in the local I mean in the network sh I mean, shared drive so if your hardware is failed you might be ending up with installing the um, uh, SQL I mean bring the new hardware and then go for a brand new installation of SQL server once the brand new the, the instance is installed then you need to restore the database from the backup and then there is a tedious job after that that scenario I mean you restore the database uh, well the database will be up and running but not all the users we you need to address a headache called orphan records which we will see oh, sorry orphaned user which we will be talking later okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah thank you Yes, uh, Calvin, I did give a research paper. I did not give an official email about it. I told you the next research paper will be about. Anybody remember? Well, in fact, I mean, probably I shouldn't send email on research paper because even if I did not send any email, uh, actually a lot of people returned that research paper on indexes. What was the topic for the research paper for the index? Anybody? Uh oh backup no no the index oh index <laughs> what was it intercept index the int index what intercept or something index intersect and inter index join index join intersect and, and index yeah. join yes i mean if you want i can send you an email but it is very clear uh, you need to investigate more on what is an index intersect and what is an index join uh, you can either google it or as I mentioned you need to go through chapter 4 6 and 7 4 6 and 8 right on the ebook the performance ebook you already yeah you already covered that in the class actually yeah if. yeah I mean no somebody no I just briefly covered what it is but uh, it is a good idea to go through that that particular section to more to get more insight yeah. into what that one is. Sure, sure, yeah. Daniel, yes. I have a correction to make. Yes. Uh, the the last LSN number, uh -huh. in this case we have 70009 is equal to, I mean it's going to be the fast LSN of the second transaction. Yes. It has so to be yes. I mean, for the for the better understanding, I said seven ten. But yes, uh, uh, in fact, that is true because the last lesson of this file will be the first lesson of the next file. You are right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I believe we don't have the time again. Um, yeah, Calvin, uh, yes, uh, you saw Lee's research paper 5. I did not put any research paper 6, but in fact, the research paper 6 is about index, intersection, and index. So don't worry about it. You still have some time, so uh, uh, you can, I mean, if you want, I can add it there to give you an idea what I'm talking about.
and the seventh uh, research paper will be on rate technology and uh, that I will give it out uh, uh, probably tomorrow and you can do it on this weekend all right so we don't have the time to actually uh, do a practice on how to do backups so we are going to start with that from tomorrow's class onwards. So tomorrow we will be covering all the different type of backups and then day after tomorrow we will be covering day after tomorrow and probably one more day we needed to cover all the different type of restores. Any questions? Uh, 